Hello, and welcome to BaseballGloveRestore.com. I just wanted to take a few minutes to show you the results of another simple, very simple baseball glove repair job. Now this was a typical repair job that anyone out there can do in a reasonable amount of time and at low cost, especially if you already have lace, conditioner, and some of the tools from previous repairs maybe. Now fixing gloves can be a good little skill to have, especially if you have kids playing baseball and softball, or maybe you're a coach and you see broken gloves and laces all of the time during the season. Once you learn how to quickly repair the most common basic breaks that occur with gloves, you can have that favorite glove back in the player's hands the very next day, or even the same day, or even the same game really, if you keep a box of glove repair items in your car, which I've done before. Sounds weird, but I have. Okay, this was another, uh, an older Spalding glove with the franchise mark inside. You'll see that later. And this was another neighbor's glove, a middle-aged guy who used this glove when he was pretty young. And I'm thinking this glove is in the late 70s to early 80s, probably. I, I couldn't find it on the internet, but based on his age and when he said he used it, I'm, I'm guessing it's around that era. And he saw some of the other gloves that I fixed up and cleaned up and wondered if I could just make this glove look a little better than what it did or how you see here. This glove wouldn't actually be used again, of course, but it would be another piece of nostalgia, uh, another topic of conversation maybe in a small club that he owns, where this, probably this glove will end up hanging. And this is a very, very common request by a lot of people anyway. It's pretty neat. Okay, so let's take a look at this, how this glove was and, and how it turned out after I uh, basically cleaned it up. Now this glove really wasn't that dirty at all, so I really didn't spend a lot of time cleaning it other than wiping it off a little bit. However, it did need a lot of conditioning. Overall, the leather was just very dry, laces cracked. Um, so it, it needed a lot of conditioning. There was one broken lace in the web going right down the center. And I didn't completely fix that, and I'll show you why. Um, if the glove was going to be used again to play with, I would have fixed it. But for what this guy wanted, um, it, it wasn't worth it. Uh, you'll see that. First time I saw a glove like this, too, by the way. I mentioned that the finger laces were pretty dry and cracked. They were loose too, you'll see that. There's an area inside the palm where your hand fits, sits in there, and that leather was rotted away too a little bit. And I didn't fix that either. That, that would be a pretty good job. Um, again, for, for what the guy wanted, it wouldn't be worth it. Plus, having that in there does kind of age the glove a little bit, so for a nostalgic piece, that's probably not a bad thing. So I left that alone. And for the most part, again, these repairs, pretty standard stuff, and, and that's why Fix That Glove was made, so you can show people how to do this themselves, so they don't have to send the glove away and, and pay uh, a lot of money to get it fixed and then pay shipping charges. Um, losing the glove for a week or whatever, how long it would take, is probably not a big deal here since he doesn't play with it, but uh, the expense would probably be a bummer. All right, so let's take a look at some of the before and after picks of this glove. Here's a top view, uh, just to show you how dry the leather was, basically. You see the, the broken see the broken lace right there in the center? Um, it was strange how they made this. What they did, they sewed just one piece of leather, attached it to the top of the glove, and they attached it at the lower part in the web there. They, that little, you can see the leather, with a, the leather with a hole in it. That was actually where the needle of the sewing machine went through, punched it in there, and attached it to the inside of the... Uh, inside of the the web the stitching and that broke once that broke that piece came out and you'll see that in another picture but I didn't repair that what I did is I I put it back inside there in, in the flap there and when I tightened when I replaced all the leather the lace in the in the web it kind of held it in there real tight again that's fine for what it is if it was going to be used again I'd have to attach it but for what he's doing that's it's fine here's what it looks like after I replaced all that looks way better. Uh, look at how good the leather looks, but not only that, the uh, the lacing makes it look a lot better too. Uh, the conditioner still hasn't soaked in all the way yet. Um, you can see a little bit of that on a little bit of that on there, but it looks a lot better before and after. And here's a shot from the side, just to show you how dry that looks. And that's what it looks like now. before and after. You still have that big stain there, that the 
kind of like a burn mark there. And here's the next one. Here's a here's a better view. Again, I wanted to show you how the uh, how bad the uh, the leather was as far as being dry. But here's where you, it's a good, better view of that one center lace going through there, and you can see where that looks like fishing line or something like there. That's what held that one. There's like a flap there where that sat in there, and then it got stitched in, and that's what held the uh, the lace in there. So anyway, that's what it looks like now. Like, you now you can see, you can see the conditioner still sitting; uh, it hasn't soaked in yet. But that that would hold that that broken lace in there quite well, unless the glove was used again and the ball was smacking that area of the glove. It it could pop out again maybe. But for what this is, uh, this works fine. It's looked like before and after. Back here, by the way, you can see some of that rotted leather I can I was talking about in the palm. And here's just a good view of the, the inside of the glove, very dry. You can see how the uh, the laces, finger laces are stretched out too. And those things were hard as rock to get, try and get those out. This is what it looks like now. Not a very good picture, um, but the leather lacing in the in the web, the top of the web, and around the the side and the finger laces, it looks much better. Not the best picture though. It's a lot tighter though. It was hard to stretch that glove out since the new lacing was in there. And here's just another shot of that. You can see how the big gaps in the fingers, because those those needed tightened up long ago and, and they never were. That's what it looks like now. Now this is a, this is a better picture. You can see some of the conditioner hasn't soaked in yet, but it will. Anything left, I'd wipe it off. But I give it a, a, a day or so. Looks much better though. Gaps are gone. So. It's a shot from the side, um, and the leather will look a lot better in this next shot. You can actually make out the uh, the 42-51-15 marking a lot better, and the new lacing just, just makes it look a lot better too. Here's a shot of the web, looking straight down at it, and what it looks like now. Much better, the laces make, makes a big difference. And you can see if you, I guess if you look close, you can kind of see how I tuck that uh, that broken lace in there. See the hole through there. Where the machine went and punched the the stitching in. Pretty nice though. Okay, so that's it. This glove turned out turned out pretty good, and I know that the guy who gave it to me will really be surprised how good it looks and feels again. And this is always true for these nostalgic type gloves. So let's go over a few things again or things you might want to know to remember. These repairs were easy. Just the finger lacing and the web lacing needed replaced. And, and some of this was just to make the glove look better. I mean, yeah, like I used to a long time ago. If I really wanted to, I could have replaced all of the lacing in the glove to have everything match, but not all the lacing was really that bad. So I left uh, some of that original lacing in. If the glove was going to be used in the field of play again, then I might consider a few more replacements. As far as the repairs that were more difficult, the rotted inner palm leather and center web lace, I didn't do those simply because the glove would not be used uh, to play again, so it wouldn't be worth the cost to fix these. Now, if the guy really wanted these fixed, of course I'd do it, but uh, for what was going on, it, it was fine the way it is. Leaving some of this actually shows some aging anyway, like the inner palm being rotted away. And this will spark conversation. Conditioning, like it says, most important part. And I've found this to be true on every glove I've, I've done. But you need to know what conditioners to use, and that's really important. And I talk a lot about conditioners in, in the ebook Fix That Glove 2 uh, in more detail and how to use them. And I really believe conditioning your glove is the key to keeping your glove for a very long time. And remember, these, these are all things you can do yourself. Being able to, to do your own baseball glove repair will save you time, which is not real important in one of these nostalgic type things, but it will save you money. Uh, you won't be paying uh, repair charges, um, shipping, or express charges, anything like that. You can do all this stuff yourself uh, very low cost. So head to the website you see here, www.baseballgloverestore.com. 
You can see all of these pictures there again, along with pictures of, of more gloves that I've repaired, which show the same results, making old, worn out, broken gloves look and feel good again, along with being able to use them again. Grab a copy of Fix That Glove. It doesn't cost that much. It's around, I think it's around 80 pages, 83 pages, something like that. The info is well worth the cost for saving or preserving the lifetime of a $100, $200. You might have a $300 glove. I don't know. But you can help keep that glove in play a long time. There should be a link directly below this video. Click on it now, and you'll head right to the site. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day, and good luck with your repair efforts.